welcome to the He Doesn't Want a Podcast, sponsored by Learners Ross Driving School and Jumbo Park Racecourse. Today I'm here with Mark McGuinness, who's the current Demurray Rack Manager. Uh, Mark, how's things, mate? You all good? Yeah, it's all good. How about yourself, good? Not bad, mate. I'm, I'm back at work now, yeah. so struggling to fit a podcast in when we work life. Um, what about <laughs> yourself? Have you been working over lockdown? or? Yeah, well, we've sort of, we're in the office one one week and then we're, we're in one week, so we we'll literally just got our computers out. So probably in the next couple of weeks, it'll be maybe flat out working from home now. So yeah, I'll be see what as well. Can't complain if we're in house. <laughs> I know. Makes it a lot easier. Mate, what I'll do then is we'll go straight into your football career. So um, first of all, what I want you to do is talk me through your um, youth days, where you started. And okay. then I know you made, you played across the water in England. So what brought you to there as well, if you can? Okay, well, at an early age, I would say probably about nine, ten. I was playing for uh, just a local BB, but BB side in Bangor, where I grew up. Obviously, I lived in Bangor there for most of my life until I was sixteen, yeah. until I went over to England. But yeah, around about nine or ten, playing for BB, uh, and then I took the step up at about eleven to twelve. I went to St George's St Andrews in the Shankill. Uh, yeah. At that at that stage, you know, I mean, St Andrews were a really, really good club. Uh, I had been watched by. Couple of well, Joe Kincaid was the scout. He was a Ranger scout as well, and I'd been watched by him the BB, and they asked yeah. me to come and sign for them. So it was good. I went up there when I was about 12, 13, 11, 12, 13, up to the jungle, up to the hammer to train when it was the old gravel pitches. That's how old I am. So uh, yeah, back to back, back. So yeah, but it was it was then, and then I was I played for St Andrews my whole my whole youth career. So when I left BB, I played there the whole time, and obviously. If you're not familiar with St Andrews, they, you know I mean, they've, they've produced some great players along the years, you know what I mean? They had a, such a massive, massive, massive setup and youth, youth setup. Uh, but then, yeah, then when I was sort of around 14 or 15, there were some sort of like scouts coming in for me and they were chatting to Joe and they were chatting to my, my managers and saying, listen, can I take them over for a trial and stuff like that? So I did, I went, I went for a few trials and maybe six or seven clubs, but then obviously uh, I went to Coventry. Um, yeah. Coventry had a, a massive as well. It had a massive Northern Irish and Irish sort of setup. There was loads of Irish boys over there, loads of Northern Irish boys over there. So I went over there two or three times, and then I decided that that was probably going to be the best move for me at that stage. Was was that one of the reasons you want to, went over? Because so many boys, especially from where you're from, and you probably played against a lot of them as well, knew them. Yeah. Um, it was easier than the the settle but moving over. Was that one of the yeah. reasons you had your choice there? What it, what it was is all of the, all the other places I went to, you know what I mean? I went, I, went to, I went to Rangers and stuff and I stayed in hotels and I went to Preston and I went to Blackburn and stayed with families. I went to Millwall and stuff. And they were all things. But when you went to Coventry, it was called the Skybury Lodge. Uh, right. And it's, it's at the training ground. So every player who came over from, say, all over the world, say, Wales, Northern Ireland, England, Scotland, far afield to Sweden and stuff, they all came yeah. and stayed there. So... If there, there was about seven or eight, seven or seven or eight rooms, so everything was on the training ground, and I liked that uh, yeah. because of, you were with you were with all the boys all the time, and you know what I mean. The bathroom was good and stuff like that, and it was it was it wasn't lonely as being maybe like I've heard people saying. I mean, they're sitting they're sitting they're sitting in their house. Like I heard Joe's one the other week is sitting in his house, he's bored, he doesn't know what to do, and he's yeah going out in his head and stuff like that. So I thought for me at that stage because you know, I mean I like being around company, so. I wanted to be there at that stage, and it was good. The setup was brilliant and stuff. It's obviously they were playing in the Premier League at that stage, and it was it was really really good. So that was probably the main reason why yeah. why I was there because of that because of that uh, that the Skybury Lodge. In terms of St Andrews, I don't think St Andrews have a team anymore. But when I was growing up, they were always the team to go to. Really, that they were always the elite yeah. side at any age group, and they, yeah. they seemed to attract players, the best players from everywhere. And then the same, like you said, there's so many different cracking players come out of the setup, and then it seemed to be just a feeder for teams across the water and in England. So it did. Is is St Andrews still going? Yeah. Do you know what happened to that club? No, or? I don't know. I think I think Joe Joe Kincaid, who started the whole thing, had sort of been got, got to sort of the area where he thought he couldn't do it anymore, and then he said, I think he gave it over to a few other people, and then it just didn't work, and then it's, it stopped there. But Back at back in the day, you know what I mean. They were producing, you know what I mean. Steve Davis and stuff like that. Boys that have played more than Irish. You know what I mean. And Joe, Joe doesn't get the recognition that 
that you know what I mean. He was he was a Rangers scout. He was bringing boys over from Rangers, but the amount of talent came through that that, that was, was scary. Yeah, yeah. And when you went to Coventry, so what age were you when you went there, and how long did you stay at Coventry? I left. I went there. Uh, I left fifth form. I left fifth form school, and I thought. Here we go. I got the about fourth four. I was fourth form. I just thought to myself all the time I wanted to, you know what I mean? I wanted to be a footballer, so I didn't really yeah. m- 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 work. So uh, then I left I left team and then I went over to to call me then and signed for three years, signed two year for two year practice and one right. year uh, professional. Right, okay. And in your time at Coventry, I take it you played through the youth teams and then you, you made your way to the reserve team as well. Yeah. Um, did I, you make many always, first team appearances? Or? I only made one or two sort of friendly, friendly before the season would start. I never actually made, a, made, made an appearance in the Premier League. So, uh, but yeah, it was good. I was playing youth team. I was playing youth team every, every week and reserve most, most, most weeks. Yeah. And then when you were at Coventry then, did, did you start to feel at any time that your time was coming to an end or, or and you made a had to look elsewhere or did they give you any indication that you, you might need to look elsewhere? What the last the last year of my contract there was there was a big clear out. It was the year it was the year they got relegated from the Premier League after about twenty two years and there was loads of changes happening. But I was told like coming up to the three or four months before the season, I was told it was me and another boy and we're told we're going to get another contract. But anyone who can get a contract he told the sort of in February because it was extra trials he went to. So extra trials meant anyone could have a club. He went and played trials matches and scouts came up there. So I was like I was told, Don't worry about that. You're you're not you're getting another two or three year contract. You know what I mean? You're fine. And then about three or four months after that we got we got relegated and they just the the, the, the the youth coach just said, Listen to me, you it's, you're not you're not getting any you're not you're not getting another contract. So yeah. that and that at that stage, then, did you have any choice, the choices to go anywhere else in England, etc., or did you? Was well, it just I, come I home? Had, and... when, when, I, when I found out, when I found out, it was I was going to get get released. I was I had an, I had a sort of an agent and a sort of person who spoke to you there. So he was he was one of the around clubs. I was actually about to come home. I was actually I was actually going to fly in and fly in and out. I was going to stay in Coventry, fly in and out, and play in San Fernando, just in over at Coventry and fly in, and then. Roddy Collins, Roddy Collins rang me. He was a, he was a manager at Carlisle, yeah. and he, he I went down to Carlisle. I got the train down to Carlisle, and I stayed there for about two or th- two or three months. But there was nothing really set in stone. And again, the I think the club was wasn't really run, ran right and stuff like that. And I was I said, listen, what I need like a bit of security. I can't keep coming down here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Month to month, month contract and stuff like that. Just, just uh, to, I need I need something set in stone. And at that stage, I just decided that I wanted I wanted to come home. Right, okay. So you're coming home and then now all of a sudden, after being basically a full-time footballer, you're now to get a new club with on a part-time basis and find a job yeah. as well. Yeah. Well, when I came, when I, you know, when I come home, that there was a lot of clubs. I did, I did, I did go to a few clubs and was, I was training with them, training with Porta Dion and stuff, and I was training with Linfield and stuff like that. But I actually left, I actually went and signed for Limavari because Paul Key and John Cunningham were at Carlisle when I was at Carlisle. And they right. came home. It was a whole clear of and they came home and they they got the manager's job at Limavari. So then bang me, I would go down to Limavari. Like I was going three nights a week down to Limavari from Bangor. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I I done that for a while. And obviously, it was, I was I was sort of working part time and call centres and stuff like that, and just trying to get by. Just thinking really, what what I just got home and really thought, what I was what am I going to do here? You know what I mean? I've got nothing really behind me. So, uh, but yeah, it was it was such it was a, it was a learning curve. So it was. I think at that stage you still held out hopes as well that you performed in Irish League, you could make your way back over across the water and still make a, a life of football. Was that the end mm-hmm. then? Yeah. Not when I, when I come home, I just thought to me, when I left Carlisle, I just thought to myself, I don't, I don't know what to do here. I just I honestly never thought in my mind again I'll get across the water again. I just thought that was it yeah. because because of the way that it ended with Coventry and stuff, and I just thought it was a sour taste of my thinking to myself. Do you know what I mean? Do I really, do I really want to do this again? So I had just settled maybe a thought myself, right? I've had three or four years in England. I know I'm still only 19, 20. And you know what I mean? I was, at that stage, I was playing for Northern Ireland. I was, I was every age group from Northern Ireland, like 15s to under 19s, and then that happens. Yeah. I just really thought, I, I thought to myself, I'll come home and play Irish League and it'll be easy. And I'll, 
know what I mean? Because I've been across the water and it's it's easy for me. But that that certainly that certainly wasn't the case. Yeah, I, I take it it was a it was hard transition mentally being so young as well that you you'd lived your whole life your football career from your rap baby 10, 11 years of age to nine, nearly 10 years later. And then all of a sudden your dreams that you had, they're just kind of diced and gone. And then you have to yeah. go back to some form of normality. Did you find it difficult coming back home in that, in that respect? Definitely, yeah. I was like, I was thinking to myself, you know what I mean? As you said, like trying to get a job and stuff like that. And going from, going from training every day, you know what I mean? The, the training two nights a week. And yeah. at the best of times, my fitness wasn't the best. So it was like myself you know what what am i going to do here am i do i have the mentality to still train every day on my own do, do i have the mentality to to be as fit as i was being a professional or else just just do what most people do and train tuesday the thursdays and playing a, a playing a saturday do you know what i mean yeah so when you went to limavada you said earlier that it wasn't as easy as you thought it was going to be so how did your uh first year in limavada go in it was actually it was actually it was actually good that that you know what i mean when i come when i come back that was the that was the, the year I well the year I played about six or seven months because I broke my toe against Linfield. But that yeah. was the best spell I had in the Irish League by a mile. I think I scored, I think I scored maybe 14, 13, 14 goals that season. Yeah. Uh, in, a, in a team that, that that were really punching above their weight at that stage. We had yeah. two we had two very good managers. We had a few good young players coming through, like of Stephen Laurie and stuff like that. And Park, big Stephen Parkhouse and stuff was playing at that stage, and there was. There, w- there was good players there, but that was that was the the year that really sort of got me my move to the Linfield because I was really really playing well at that stage. But then after that, I just sort of I just thought to myself, this is going to be easy. Like when I went to Linfield, I thought that's 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 it done now. That's me. That's me done now. If I get two or three years contract, which I did, then that was me. But it was totally totally wrong. It opened my eyes as soon as I as soon as I went to Linfield. Yeah, just a completely different setup of professionalism as well. Not that mm. Limavady aren't a professional club, but no, they yeah, yeah. are the, the pinnacle of Irish League in terms of yeah. how they go about things. Um, so when you went to Linfield, did you go injured after breaking your toe, or did you? And then you're mm. trying to get back to fitness, or were you fit by the time you got there? Well, 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 I think I broke. No, I was certainly wasn't fit when I got there. No chance. Uh, <laughs> I was. I think I broke my toe in the Feb. I think I broke my toe in February, and then that was me out maybe for. So the the start of pre season at that stage I, I signed for Linfield, but yeah. at that stage, I mean I I think I signed for Linfield, and the, I think there's a picture of me in the Islands that night somewhere, and I was playing against the you know, other played against Rangers and stuff and friendlies. Yeah. I honestly must have been about fifteen still. I was just like, I look back at it going, now, I was just back, look back at it going, no no wonder it's still Linfield for that long because look, look at the look at the state of me. <laughs> I was like I'm not living my life right, not eating properly, not not I said you know what I mean I. I didn't really get it myself to train every day. I mean, them boys were training every day flat out. Uh, yeah. But I just myself, honestly, I just thought to myself, "Oh, I'm I've come back from England. This is this is going to be this is going to be easy. And it's it's totally different. It's just opened my it opened my eyes big time." Yeah. So in terms of Linfield, was uh, was injuries an issue ever at Linfield? It was just that um, you maybe didn't perform as well as you could, and, and did you play much as well during your time there? No, I no. When I when I came in there, I was it was a pre season and stuff and. I remember playing the Champions League, the Champions League qualifier in the first round. That was my first game, and it was at Windsor. And like thirty minutes in, I couldn't breathe. I was like, I looked over, and my numbers came up. My numbers came up. I was like, Oh no, he's taking me off already here, hasn't he? It's like thirty minutes. So that, you know what I mean? That was that was the sort of start of it. And then really, I couldn't really get into it. I did, I did get a few starts. I did play play the odd time, and when I did play, I done all right. But it yeah. was just, it was just like. I don't know, and I didn't. I had a bad car accident, but I'm not blaming. I'm not blaming. I'm not blaming a car accident on on, on me not performing for Linfield or or yeah. playing at the best of my ability. I just thought to myself, you know what I mean? Football, yes, it's not the be all and end all for me now. So you know what I mean? I, I wasn't really concentrating on concentrating and looking after myself properly at that at that stage. Yeah. So your time at Linfield, how long did that last then? And then what was your that, next move in? I signed a two year contract. At that stage, and then I only stayed a year. And David, David just said to me, "Listen, I'll offer, I'm going to offer you other clubs here. Do you know what I mean? You're not my plan." I was like, "Fair enough." So I went to Dungannon, and right. that was that was another sort of disaster. Again, half fit again. wasn't really wasn't really bothered. Stuff wasn't really wasn't really worried. And then yeah, I, I signed there for two years. And I say I only maybe made it maybe six or seven appearances as well. And I left after as well. So 
Yeah. Um, it, your time in Ashley, again, do, do you look back on it now that you're a wee bit older and wiser and, and regret anything from that time you could have done differently? You said you, you thought it would be easy and also maybe you didn't live the life that you should have for a player playing at that level. Do, do you regret yeah. that now? Or? I, don't, I don't know whether I regret it or not. It certainly, you know, it certainly didn't, I don't, certainly didn't uh, to me, fulfil my potential of a, of, a, of a player in the Irish League. You know what I mean? I had all the ability to say you have all the ability in the world, but you know what I mean? Is your attitude right? And, you know I mean, looking back, no, my attitude wasn't right. You know what I mean? And I have the sum that I have to obviously uh, deal with, deal with through through the course of my life. But I don't. It's not. It's not regret because I would never really regret anything. It's just I, I wish I had done things differently. I wish I had, a, you know what I mean, knuckled down and kept myself fit and kept looked after my body. But you know what I mean, I, some some players don't do that. You know what I mean, some players yeah. are, are are designed to do that. You know what I mean. But if you really really want it. And you really, really do want to play, then you have to, you have to do that, sacrifice things. And I don't think I was willing to sacrifice things at that, at that stage of my career. Yeah, it is what it is, really. So, yeah, uh, yeah, that's it. So after Duncan, and then what was the the next chapter? Then, then I went to Bangor, which was just fair enough. I went to Bangor with Paul Miller, and then that was I actually quite enjoyed that that spell because you know when when they when they let me play, and he and he mean he had it, he believed in me, and then yeah, and then we got it was that stage where there was. We didn't win. We didn't win the league or anything. We didn't do anything. We just got. They were just. I. I had the FA. We just given out the licenses. You know, you had your license, and we just got automatically got promoted to the Premier League. Oh yeah, yeah. And then he le- he left, and Marty Quinn came in, and I stayed there for a play- stayed there for a year. It was brilliant. Really, really good. Really enjoyed playing with Bangor and stuff like that. Obviously, my home home club and stuff like that. And I really, really enjoyed playing under Marty. Marty was a Marty was a character, and then. Uh, at the end of the, at the end of that season, we were doing well, and then again we didn't Bangor didn't renew their license, so they automatically got got relegated, and then Marty left, Marty left, and then it all just really went downhill from there, yeah. and then I went to the Welders. Right. Okay. So the Welders then at that stage then um, you did play a good few years the Welders then, so take it you really enjoyed your time there as well. Yeah. I, 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 the, that was the best. That was the best club I've ever been at. You know what I mean? In the Irish League by a mile. Uh, I signed there, I think, in 2009, 2008, 2009 season, or maybe yeah. 2009, 10, because we won the State Cup, we won the, won the, won the Championship two, and then we won the State the State Cup in 2010. So that that was that year. It was brilliant. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, I had freedom to play, and it was just I met so, so many good friends there, and still they're still they're still my good friends to this day. You know what I mean? So yeah, Paul Muskelly was the manager with with with, with Colin Stanix. You know what I mean? Good, good, good lads and stuff like that. And, and the team was brilliant. You could see at that stage the Welders were on the way up there at, at that stage, and they were, you know what I mean? They were they were signing good, good players. And then again, the management, gets, the management left, and I thought, I just thought to myself, like, what, what am I, what, what, what am I doing anymore? I thought I'll drop down, I'll drop down a few legs, and then that's when I signed for Cumber under Eric Holiday. Right, okay. So that was 2011, 2012 season. I signed, I went to Cumber. Uh, yeah. Obviously, because I was living in Bangor as well, and we were closer. You know what I mean? Than going to the Belfast team, and I knew a few of the boys at Cumber. They were playing. They were obviously playing in there. I played there for 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 a season or so, which was which was good as well, a good experience as well. But it was definitely the Weathers was definitely the. I was at two two stints with the Weathers, but the first the first one was really good when we won the Steve Steve Cup. Yeah, it's like you said, it's it's your first trophy, was it? It's your first senior trophy as well. It, it was, yeah. Well, I was at I was at Linfield when they won the league, but you had to play over fourteen games. I think and I only think I played played twelve or something. So I didn't I didn't really get a medal. So but yeah, that was really the championship too. Was was really my, my senior my senior medal of football in the state cup. Yeah, and yeah. uh, state cup something that a lot of people who've won it. It's one of real fondest memories looking back on as yeah. well. So it is. Um, it when you went. Was. When you left the Welders in and went to Cumber, um, what brought you back then? Do you go back to the Welders after Cumber? Yeah, did you? Yeah, I, yeah I, went, I went back to the Welders after Cumber. Uh, I mean, I enjoyed my time at the, at the Cumber, but that, you know what I mean? I was, I was doing well again. I thought to myself, look, what am I doing here? I, I can play higher again like this. I yeah. could definitely play. Uh, again, Eric Eric left. Uh, John Bailey came in for a while. He tried to keep me, and I was just like, you know what? I need to go back again here. The Welders asked me to come back. So, I'm going to give it another, it was like sort of give it another shot, you know what I mean? Even though yeah. it was maybe only like 27, 28 at that stage. You know what I mean? It's, people say that I've had more clubs than Tiger Woods, but sure. But I just, you know what I mean? It's just, 
I just go where you are you know where, where people I like people and obviously I know the managers so but yeah, yeah I went back to the welders and yeah it was Gary Smith the manager at that stage uh, manager really 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 brilliant manager uh, one of the best managers I've ever, I've played under in the Irish League but yeah really 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 good good, good man doesn't shout anything doesn't doesn't do anything he's calm he's he has a banter you know what I mean he's He's a brilliant manager, and he, he got the best out of me at that stage. That was really another really really good good season. We, I mean, we got to the intermediate cup final. Uh, we got beaten the intermediate cup final, and we got beaten the Stephen Cup state cup final by Carrick, who I think we finished as well in the championship too. Carrick won it. That was the year that Carrick won the, the treble. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it was. Well, there's well, there's for me it was definitely the best club I've been at. Yeah, I actually remember that cup final. I was at a Carrick were a very good set at that side because they yeah. had like say Hickley playing for them as well then, didn't they? Yeah, they had they had Hickley and Ben Roy and you know what I mean. They had the, the and Miguel 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 played. I think he scored. They battered yeah. us on Christmas Day like beat us four one. But the intermediate cup final as well was was a good one. I could, I could send off like so. That was my last game. That was actually my last game before before I moved to move to Ballymena. <laughs> happened. Right. Gary, before the match, he's like, you're, you're going to Ballymena, you're going to Ballymena after this. And I was like, what do you want to do? He goes, spikes around me, spikes around me. Uh, because we had played them in the Irish Cup. I mean, we nearly, we nearly knocked them out in the Irish Cup in the, in the quarterfinal. And Tippy scored, Tippy scored the last minute to make it a replay and then they beat us up there 1-0 or something. But yeah, it was just like, you're going to you're going to Ballymena. I was like, what do you mean I'm going to Ballymena? Like, spikes around me, he wants you to say it. He wants you to say it. And I'm like, well, okay, I need to do it here. I mean, it was. It was like if I if if Snicker had said to me, "Listen, what do you want to say, and we'll can sort something out," I would have said yes, probably. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I think I just want another Irish league. You know what I mean? So, yeah. We didn't, we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't get we didn't get that far, which is a which is a wee bit of a regret because I would have stayed, I would have stayed there. And so you you name my back in the the Irish Premier League with Balmain, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. I left. I left. I left there probably. <laughs> I mean, about three or four, three or four seasons ago, yeah. Uh, and yeah, I went in there again. Spike sent me. Uh, it was I got sacked again, signed two years, and then again doing really well pre-season, doing really well, picking up niggly injuries. I know I never blame injuries for anything, but getting getting niggly injuries, especially at that level, you know what I mean? You can't, and especially with me, not you know what I mean. I, I I was the first to go to the gym, but I wouldn't I wouldn't yeah. really done. done. And you could you could you could tell at that stage, and I was just, and then I got up. I was playing. We were playing Crusaders at Seaview, and rain was pelting, pelting, pelting down, and uh, I went to kick a ball, and I, my back, I just couldn't feel anything. My back, I just couldn't feel my whole right leg. I couldn't feel anything. My, my whole right leg, and I just had to come off after about thirty minutes or something. And I was, I was running around for about twenty minutes, thinking to myself, I can't even run here, and I can't even literally lift my leg. And so after that, I was I was driving home in the car, and I had to pull the car over, and my mate had to come and get me. And on the Sunday morning, I had to ring the ambulance. My, I went for an MRI scan, and the, there was a nerve, the static nerve, it pinched the back of my in the end of my spine. So right. again, that was so that was I was at a, about a month later, two months later, I got a I got a I got a, a back operation in my back to 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 shave to shave the lower disc off my off my static nerve, so it, so I could have feeling in my right leg again. And then at that stage, my, my recovery wasn't really happening. I was, I was, I wasn't doing much recovery stuff like that. I was just thought to myself, "Is this worth it again?" You know what I mean. But and then Spike got Spike got sacked, and then David Jeffrey came in again, and he told me that he didn't want to. I had another, again. I had a year left in my contract, and he told me that he he wasn't going to use me. So we um, just part of the company, and that was not true. Twice Davy's done that on you, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I don't know yeah. what it is. I mean, he, when he when he was a man when he was a manager, he'd, he'd say that he was I was one of the best players he'd ever work he'd ever work with. But I don't know. Maybe it, maybe it just wasn't wasn't that it wasn't it wasn't his cup of tea at that, at that stage. Yeah. Of the you know what I mean? We we had, we had met at the start. You know what I mean? When it when it come home come home and then at the end of my career. You know what I mean? So yeah. And he still didn't fancy me. So that's. That's, that's that's how that's how it goes. Exactly, but it, it can see as well with your career as well. It, it went down gradually to Cumber mm-hmm. and Amateur League, but 
then you got that motivation and drive and you're able to push yourself back up again the Irish yeah. League which um, did you f- you said you were never a gym goer so fitness was never really your thing but did you find a change in mentality at that point when you were a cumber and you believed you said earlier I think I can play higher here did you have a change in mentality to go back to the welders and then push yourself in the Irish Premier Division again yeah I always knew I always knew ability wise you know what I mean I always knew my ability was there it was, it was just not even my attitude because if you see me on a football pitch my attitude you know what I mean I'm 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 a winner I want to win like and people yeah. if you ask play it against me they they don't like playing against me but on the pitch yes I win off the pitch you know what I mean I'll I'm 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 as I'm as sound as a pine with everyone but it's not just the mentality it was just I know I can do this if I if I stay fit and if I keep even working you know what I mean even two nights a week like I never I would never do I would never go out and run for a run on a Monday or a Wednesday or a Friday I would never yeah. do that it would, it would have been training an hour and a half on Tuesday and a Thursday and playing maybe that's what maybe that's was 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 a bit of the downfall as well but yeah I whenever no I'm I think I'm getting older and I'm a bit wiser you know what I mean and yeah. it was it wasn't it wasn't because I was fit, it was just I was I was getting older and wiser, and I knew when to run, and I knew when not when to run, and I knew there was a wee boy beside me who could run quicker than me and faster than me, so I would tell him, you know what I mean, run. So yeah. use my brain a wee bit more than than that, and obviously, uh, yeah, obviously as you as you know, as you get you get, you get older, you get wiser, and that was it. But yeah, I, I definitely knew they could still could still play higher, and I think that that year at Combo really helped me because I started enjoying my football again, and I really really like the welders. I just thought. If I go down the amateur league, I know I know I can play and I know I'll be I'll be good. I think I scored I think I scored sixteen or seventeen goals from midfield that year. We were we were really we were really really good at that good that good that year. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I just thought I can't. You know what I mean, I'm tw- I don't know 27, 28, I can't can't give this opportunity to miss again. So I know I wanted to go back to the Welders anyway because because I'd liked it so well when it when it when it was there in two thousand and ten. So but yeah, yeah, definitely definitely helped me going down to come up. But then once you once you got that down. Operation on your back as well. Then you start to think then there's maybe a wee bit more to life than football as well because yeah, that's a major operation you're going in for. And then mm-hmm. I'm sure you were thinking at that stage, will I ever play football? And then you said, is it even worth it trying to fight back to play again? Yeah, or, I'm well, sure that was what, a lot when, 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 when I, yeah, definitely. When when I went when I went for the operation, I was literally I knew I knew I it was actually brilliant because. Got my MRI scan and obviously Balamina paid for it, which was brilliant and stuff. And I was on the NHS, and obviously you know how, how long it takes to work in the NHS. But yeah. I got my eye scan straight away, and Paul Harbison, who was at Balamina, was the was the reserve manager, and I was chatting away to him, saying, "Listen, I need to I get in for an operation here, and I don't know when it's going to be." And he was like, "Who's the surgeon?" And I was like, "It's Mr. Darwish," and he's like, "That's my wife's best friend." And I was like, "What?" He was like, "Brilliant!" I said, he goes, "Give, give me give me a couple of days, and I'll sort this for you." Within the space, within the space of a week, I was in there, and well, the first time I was in there, laying down in the surge, this the bed, and then he said, come in and goes, 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 goes to put me to sleep, and goes, I can't do this for you. I was like, why? I was like, you're something wrong with your heart. I was like, what's he on about? He goes, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to postpone this this whole surgery here because there's something wrong with your heart, and I can't put you under, and I can't put you under here until I know what's what the problem is. So, let had to had to leave this literally leave the surgery. Go and get a heart scan for a week and a half. Check what was wrong. It was it was just an irregular heartbeat, which was fine. So well, it wasn't fine, but the, I spoke to the, the, the heart surgeon about it, and he was just just do this, do this for a couple of weeks. And so I finally got it within about with the whole and all, but got it within about two about two months or so f- from start yeah. to finish. I got the MRI and the, and the whole surgery, which was brilliant because you would I mean you would wait two two or three years for a back operation like that. Yeah, and in, in terms of your recovery, then you said that. It was hard for you to kind of get motivated to, to try and come back and properly do the recovery exercises to get back mm-hmm. playing again. So, David Jeffries then let you go. Um, were you then yeah. fit to play, and then did you go any out anywhere else, or was that you? Yeah, you done. Or? No, I was fit to play, and then I went to I went to Bangor and signed for yeah. Bangor uh, again. Brilliant. So the sec- second stint of Bangor was 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 brilliant. Obviously, they were in the Balamina League. Uh, Again, I was I was playing well, you know what I mean. I was I was doing well. I was still I was still enjoying my football again, even though I was playing, I was I was coming off the pitch and it, sometimes I couldn't really walk properly, you know what I mean. And a couple of days I would have to again. I didn't. I mean, I didn't. People would say, "Why well, did not stretch again?" I didn't. I didn't. I just didn't want to do that. Didn't didn't interest me to stretch after a game or anything like that. But there was there was nights where I would lay in bed and I literally couldn't lift my lift my back or lift my legs. But it was just driving me on. I, knew I wanted to still play and I knew I had. You know what I mean? I, I, want, I wanted to still, wanted to still do it. And then that that season, 
we missed out. It was only it was only two seasons. It was only yeah, two seasons ago. It was only yeah. we missed out in one point. They got they got back in. Uh, I think we won we won eighteen games in a row and stuff like that. It was really really good. And then yeah. and then the opportunity came to to obviously start to get into sort of system managing coaching management roles. Yeah, at that stage, then were you happy enough then to to retire because you're thinking it isn't. It is too hard in your body, and like you said, yeah. there's a couple of days you're you're up in bed, and yeah. after that one season where you, you came so close, what you're thinking, is it really worth going through this again? Was yeah. that what it was, kind of? Yeah, it was. To be fair, I, mean, I was just like, I mean, I'm at Houston, and I just, I just, he had offered me, he offered me to stay for another year and stuff like that, and I just said, listen, I don't know whether I can do this or not. It's, it's not worth it. You know what I mean? I'm, you know, I mean, I've got children, young children, and I. I know it's so silly, but honestly, there was there was days and nights that I couldn't, and even still to this day, I, you know what I mean. I do get I do get pain, you know what I mean, and it, it, it's sore, but it's bearable. But I just yeah. thought I can't risk this again because if this happens again to me, you know what I mean, I, I could end up maybe in a wheelchair or something like that. So I just yeah. decided, I just decided at that stage, yeah, I'd, I'd, even though I really wanted to play and I still had the ambition to play, I just thought I, I can't physically do it anymore. Yeah, you've had a good run basically, and that's it. Just... Yeah. Definitely, my body's been battered and bruised. You know what I mean. I haven't really looked after it that well, but yeah, I've just. You know what I mean, it's it's, it's I've, I've done what I've, I've done what I've had to do. You know what I mean. Whether whether people say it's been bad or you've, people say you've wasted your talent, that's 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 up to them. But it's, I've I would never change anything. I don't regret anything. But I just I really really enjoy enjoy my time playing. Yeah, and then how have you found uh, step in the coaching then and management? Okay, to be fair, yeah. Uh, I, I was at short. I was obviously at shorts first of all with Billy. We Billy Yule. He ran. We won. Then just said, listen, the shorts job. Want to come down and be a coach, a manager? And I was like, right, that's no problem. I do. Yeah, I'll do. So I went down with him, and I was assistant manager, and I was I was coach. He doesn't take any training sessions, by the way. He, he just managed. He just sits and watches. He just gets everyone else to do it. So that's like me. If he ever gets, if he ever gets a job, if he ever gets a job again, you have to be prepared. Be prepared. He's going to be as close to do everything. Check the balls. Check the, get the water. Again. I was like, Billy, you're not doing anything. He's like, ah, no, I don't have to talk to this player. Yeah, was like, right, okay, Billy, dead, dead on, dead on, out in the, out in the freezing cold. He's in the change room having a, having a cup in a biscuit. I'm like, boy, this is the change here. It's, and I'm not having this. But yeah, it was good. <laughs> You know what I mean? I always said that I wanted to coach. I mean, I want to. I want to. I don't really. Not that, not that I want to coach kids. I, I want to coach men in, in sort of amateur league, sort of prem, semi-professional football to, yeah. to give them my experience of what, of what you know what I mean, what they need to do. You know what I mean? There's, there's boys. There's boys that are at amateur league level or are good players, but they've never been coached. And I just want to yeah. try and help someone around and go. Oh, I mean, oh, that, that, what he said to me, I was good. You know what I mean? What that, what he's done there is good. I've never done this. You know what I mean? There's Five year old, thirty year old men who've never been been coached and showed how to where to go, where to what to do, and what to do. And luckily, I I've been coached at a young a, a young level across the water to yeah. and show that experience on. Not that I say I wouldn't like to coach fifteen or sixteen year olds, but I just thought I wanna I wanna start my career coaching a men's, a men's sort of team, amateur league team to, to to sort of get them to see if they can and take anything off me. You know what I mean? One one little bit of advice or not? You know what I mean? So. I, I, yeah. like, I like that environment more than, more than kids at the minute. That's been yeah. You see, I personally, I started in youth football before I moved into senior football. And the reason why I moved right. into senior football, even though I was 27 when I first went into manage our seconds, um, mm-hmm. as much as managing kids was great for development, you can still develop adults, like you said, but yeah. it's a tactical side of the game as well. You can kind of get into players' heads a wee bit more as well when you're yeah. looking at senior football. Whereas young kids, it's more... Do this, do this, do this drill, do that drill, yeah. pass the ball this way, yeah. pass the ball that way. It's a wee bit more basic just. And in terms of yeah. that, I just sort of wanted to move myself on there, so I did to do that. Yeah, it's definitely. So yeah, definitely. That's what's as you said there about going at youth, starting at youth and then obviously taking taking a men's football. It's, it's more rewarding for me because I, mean, I can see I can see play I can see players there that are good. They're, they're good players and and even mean they're they're young enough, but they've just never. They've never had the they've never had the coaching. They've never had someone to say to them, "Why are you doing this?" or "What are you doing this for?" Do you know what I mean? They're just they're just wanting to go and play football and yeah. not up and down and do stuff. Not really, not really thinking. You know what I mean, I when I when I take coaching sometimes or when I when I when I speak to them for a match or in training, you know what I mean? I ask them, you know what I mean? I say to them why and you know what I mean? Why are you stopping the ball? Do you not know where the pass is? You know what I mean? So little things like that just gets them thinking because I know half of them just come. 
come to training Tuesday and Thursdays and want to kick a ball about. You know what I mean? And I'm like, that's that's not that's not what's happening here. I want to. I mean, we want we want to get better here. And we want to try 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 and get up get up the leagues a bit. Yeah, it's that old joke when you go to training and you have a session planned and somebody says two teams. We're picking two teams. Where's the bibs? They always say it. They always like they always like just one. Well, just they always like let's shoot, let's shoot. I'm like, let's shoot. First of all, we don't even have the keeper's not here yet. I'm like, no, we're not just going to shoot. It's just like. If you want to just if you want to shoot, go over the shoot with the hockey girls over there. If you want to it's when it's it's when a centre half says, "Yeah, let's go and just hit shots," and you're like, "What are you worried about? <laughs> you don't need to do that." But at the end, like five aside, they're like, "Right, okay," and you you look and the centre half, two centre halves are up front, and the team going, "Just whack it up to me, just whack it up to me, and I'll score, I'll score." I'm like, "We need we need this team. Yes, she's gonna have a five aside at the end for ten or fifteen minutes, but. Just play your own positions. It's not. It's not something that's run anywhere. Exactly. Exactly. So after your time at Shorts, is that when you then moved to Tamari Rack? Then was that your? Yeah. Uh, I got a phone call from one of my friends who used to coach me at the Welders, and he was just like, he just said, "Listen, like Tamari Rack are interested." Uh, I think that I spoke to him about it, and he was he just said he wasn't interested at the time because he was at Orange Field. He just said that he said to the board that Ivan maybe be interested in doing it. So I hummed it hand. I hummed and had for it for ages and I didn't want to help away and stuff it was because mm-hmm. Billy, Billy gave me the chance. I said, listen, Billy, I've, I've had an offer here and I need to go and speak to Don Murray Rack. So he said, no, that's no problem. You go go ahead, obviously, do what's right for you. So literally, I, I'm waited, I must have waited for about a month or so and then I decided to ring the guy and I rang him and I went up and spoke to him. And um, then sort of a week I agreed to get to November. So yeah, it was, it was good. So. They were, they were struggling at the time, you know what I mean? There's people saying to me, do you mad in the head taking this job? And I was like, well, I have to give, have to give it a go. So, I mean, if I don't give it a go, then I'm not, I'm not what's happening. So, but yeah, I took them over in November, so and then, 2008. Yeah, your first year then, you, they were struggling, you kept them up. And then yeah. last year, that you just had a real push, push for, towards promotion until yeah. the season stopped early then. Yeah, well, I when I went in November, you know what I mean, I think... They they'd only they'd only won two games or something. They'd lost about fifteen games, and I was just like, "What am I going to do here?" I had no one out with me. I was just like, "What am I going to do here on my own? What am I going to do?" Uh, I actually played a couple of games. I played a couple of games because we didn't really have the the you know what I mean the the players at the time. But you know what I mean we 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 went to Cumber and stuff and beat Cumber when they were when they were when they were go go my own stuff. So we did we did you know what I mean. I just give I just give boys that hadn't had a chance just said listen go and play just go and do do what you want I'll give you a bit of advice but do you know what I mean this is this is what we're going to do so play and okay enough you know what I mean I think, I think I won five out of my seven games and drew one of them so it was really really good uh, I think we finished finished third from bottom instead of second so yeah and then I just done I just said to them at the end of the season I said listen lads it's, if if you want to beat this club it's 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 not it's not a social club anymore even though yes you can. You can have your you can have your, your social timeline, but I'm changing this. I'm changing the whole the whole ethos of this club. I'm gonna you know what I mean. I, I'm gonna bring players in here that probably you'll say to me, oh, he's not good enough. He's not good enough, but they will be good enough. I think I signed I signed about nine or ten players. And, I mean, they were they were from, they were from lower. I signed a couple from shorts who who had watched from shorts. You know what I mean? Who who are two two smashing players. I you know what I mean. I, there was players there that I knew that were good, but they just needed a bit of, a bit of work on. Do you know what I mean? Their attitudes need to change and stuff like that. And it, it was brilliant when I, you know what I mean. It was really, really good. And preseason was good. And you know what I mean. We we think we were like undefeated in ten or eleven games straight and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, we were, we were doing well. We only had five games left, and we were sitting second. I know other clubs had other games in hand, but they, you know what I mean. They they still had to win them, and we mm-hmm. still had to pay the. We, Still play the top three or four teams, so I think if it would have if it would have went to the would have went to the wire, we would have we would have had a great chance. Yeah, your first job in really going in was get the confidence in the players that were there, just to yeah. get the season over and done with. And then yeah. the the start of next season was when you could really stamp your own your own identity on the yeah. team, bring in your your players that you want to work with. And yeah. sometimes you have to kind of remove boys who don't want to be part of that culture as well. And yeah, trying to create an environment, to win an environment, and. You've obviously done that with the Murray Rack, which is yeah. a credit to you and your, your coaching staff here. Definitely. It's good. I've got Stevie Munn, who I played the comedy with. Uh, he's another character. He, I rang, I hadn't spoken to him for years and years, and probably since comedy, honestly. Well, he played, he played with the Welders for a bit in Bangor, but he just, he, 
he, did, he just he just left the radar and I didn't know where he was and he'd been playing through Jamar and stuff like that. He played the amateur league for a while and I think I Facebooked him or something saying, what are you doing? And he sent me his number and I spoke to him. He said, listen, he lives in Lisbon, he lives in Moira. I was listen, do you want to come, do you want to come on board with me here? I says, I need an assistant manager. Uh, do you want to come on board? And he said, yes, no problem. So he's been there with me, you know what I mean? He's brilliant with the boys. He's He's sort of good cop and I'm sort of bad cop, you know what I mean? One of them, I, one I of thought Stevie was meant to be bad cop. I have a couple of mates who's to play with tomorrow and it's <laughs> No, he's changed, he's changed, he's changed, he's changed a bit, you know what I mean? This is I tell him the chill out, he's getting his he's getting his banter back a wee bit, so he's he's changed a bit, you know what I mean? I'm not that bad, you know what I mean? I, I like the banter too, but there's a time and place, but he's just he's just mad. But there's a there's a there's a good balance and you know what I mean? He knows he knows his football and he knows, yeah. He knows it. but yeah, it's it's it was definitely, it was definitely brilliant. As, as you said, there was obviously dead wood that needed to go out. You know what I mean? And I don't like, I don't like telling people that because in my, you know what I mean? People used to me, you know what I mean? So I'm thinking of my experiences. You know what I mean? But yeah. if you're a manager, you have, to, you have. To, someone told me, you know what I mean? You have to be a manager. You, you have to say them things. Yeah. And I would always say, you know what I mean? If you're, not, you're not going to be here, I'll try and get you another club. You know what I mean? There's, there's players that have left me, and I said, listen, well, don't be just not going to play. If you want to go, I'll go and try and get you another club. You know what I mean? I know, I know if. I Quite a lot of managers and in different and different levels, and I will I'll I'll get I'll get you another club if it's not with me and you want to go somewhere else, I'll get you another club. Yeah, and then next season, then so has your pre-season preparation started this year already? Are you? Yeah. Now you yeah. got promotions at the end now. Definitely, yeah. It's you know what I mean. I said to the boys there we were training last week, and I said, listen, this is going to be even harder this year. You know what I mean? There's, there's every team now want to go. They want to beat you straight away. You know what I mean? And that's. That's what you have to take with it, you know what I mean? So from where we've been and what we're doing, what where we've where we finished, there's double there'll be teams there that will will obviously try harder and they will they will they will want to beat us and I've told them that they need to be they need to be they need to be better, if not better, than come come when the season kicks off again. Yeah. Um we don't obviously know when the season's gonna start, so it is it's a hard time for us coaches, I feel, because mm-hmm. I personally am almost afraid of missing the boat where I'm expecting us to be told that Oh, your league season can start in about two weeks' time, and you're not really ready not for ready. it. And it's just that's the fear, really. You're trying to get boys ready for a league season. It might start earlier than expected, or who knows? It could start in September, October, and mm-hmm. it's really hard sort of times for coaches to try, especially when it comes to preseason. You want things organised, and routine, and schedules, and planning towards that end goal of the first day of the season. It is a wee bit difficult at the moment, do you not think? Definitely, like I've said, I mean, I've asked players, I've, I've, we've been training once a week, maybe sometimes the odd week twice, but I've been saying to players come to train, they're like, when, when's, when's it starting? You know what I mean? I, I don't want to, because, you know what I mean, you can, we could be training here for two, we could be training here for two months and turn around and go, well, hold on, we're not, we're not going to start the October, end of October, you know what I mean? You're like, I'm, we're training for all this. I know you can play friendly games and stuff like that, but it's not the same. I don't want to keep, keep training them and keep training them and keep training them, over training them and then go, What's happening? I'm hoping that start of September, I'll say, well, they might say in August, right, we're going to start in September here, so I'm getting a bit ready for that. But then other people are saying, no, October, October, you know what I mean? So, as you said, it's, 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 say, everyone's going down different paths. Some teams are just yeah. going on pre season routine. Yeah. Um, other clubs started a wee bit earlier, other clubs still haven't even started yet as well. Yeah. Even championship yeah. clubs, you know what I mean? Even championship clubs are not like ours. I don't think ours when he started tonight, you know what I mean? They, there's this like because I know I obviously speak to John there, but he's like I don't. What's, what's the point? There's no what's the point. There's, no one knows what's going to happen here. You know what I mean? I don't want my players training for two months, three months, saying turn around and going, oh, we're not starting yet. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. It'll stop the enjoy, it doesn't stop the enjoyment, but it's just you know I mean that's your season going to run the whole way through. And you're going to you know the, some players will burn out, some players will like that, some players will go oh I'm throwing the head up, some players will do stuff else. So. You have to, it has to be it has to be the right balance. So I thought just one once a week to start with, and then sort of after after this holiday, sort of sort of gradually build it up the, the, the two, and then see what happens. Yeah, it's obviously strange times as well. And so, um, look, uh, I want to go on to a couple more questions, just um, just in general about your no career. So, um, what would be your best moment you've had in football? Best moment having football was probably. When 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 in the when in the Steve Cup with the Welders yeah. in the ten first time the club had ever done it you know what I mean with my mates it was it was it was really really good we didn't actually play it that we would actually play it on Christmas Day that year because the snow came so I had to play it a week after but it was it was, it was brilliant yeah the, some of the players I played for the Welders were the top class players like 
And what would be your worst moment in football then? Okay, where do you want to start? Uh, obviously, well, apart from apart from injuries, but apart when when I got released from Coventry, that was that was hard to take after being told yes, yes you'll be you'll be like, you'll be captain, and all of a sudden, just one day being told that you're simple, you're you're not good enough, really. That we've you know, I mean, we've we've more players here. That we've there's players coming in here that are they're just as good as you, if not better. So sorry, it's that's it, and then that's just it. You're just left. You're just left your own devices. Really, and that's that's you have to you have to just pick yourself up. Yeah. Um, who would be the best player you've ever played with? Andy Marlow, banger. First, yeah, first time I was there. He retired or he retired early. Uh, excellent, excellent player all around. Just everything he had. Uh, hold up play, goal scoring, link up play, skill, everything. All yeah. this. I've obviously played with players. At reserve level across in England, but you know what I mean. They were just players coming in and out of the first team who were just trying to get fit. But all in all, I, Andy Morrow was the best player I've ever played with. Yeah. Who would be the best player you played against then? Against probably probably not the best, but the the noise played against. I mean, the likes of Shane McCabe and stuff like that for Glen Avon and stuff, and all and Ram McCann. Who, your top top players, you know what I mean, when they don't give you give you time on the ball, you know what I mean. I, I like a bit of that, you know what I mean. I, I, I used to up my game when I played against good players, you know what I mean. So yeah. uh, you know what I mean. The like the likes of the likes of Ram McCann was, was was a class class player, even at young age and when he when he when he when he did play in the Irish League. But the 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 best the best player would probably probably be so you played against Noel Bailey as well, it was a yeah. Limavari. And you know what I mean? What a, what a defender he was. There's a, there's a couple, but really, yeah, probably no, no, no Bailey. I think he was probably the hardest. And okay. yeah, great. Got to play with him as well, did you? When you were yeah, in? yeah, a couple of games. Yeah. I'll <laughs> give you <ball> me again. <laughs> um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on to a couple of questions I got through Twitter. Right, okay. Um, some of them I don't really know the the reference, but you can tell me. Jim McManaman Scott. about Nemo. <laughs> and Ibiza? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, the bang we had, we had the we had the Ibiza for a bangers end of season two and Marty Verder and all there and Andy Morrow was there and all the all the all the mad all the mad men of the Irish League and I didn't know I didn't know until probably we got there there was there was a there was a spare room that that, that, that Jim and Marty had sort of kept aside and the, I think Mar- Marty's girl, Marty's girlfriend at the time was her wife. His wife now was a was a was a, a rep, and yeah, she booked them an extra room. So I walked into this room one day thinking, "Whose room is this?" And it was all blacked out. It was dark, and once you get in, you can get out. <laughs> so we were there for four days. So <laughs> once you get in there, I was in the room, and we Jim had like a wee a wee finger thing with Nemo. With like it was a wee Nemo thing. He was going <laughs> right. Kept walking around, basically going. Nemo, 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 Nemo. I was like, Jim, what are you doing? What are you actually doing here? And he was, was just his body piece. So at the end of at the end, the day before he had he he couldn't find it. And it was, he was going absolutely mad. He was like, I've lost Nemo, I've lost Nemo. And I was like, oh, man, I don't know, I don't know where you've done it. So still to this day, we don't we don't know where Nemo is. So if anyone knows where he is in a big thing, you need to let us know. A beat is a mad place anyway. Things like that. Oh, it's crazy, mate. It's crazy, mate. It's crazy. Um, Scott McMillan asked, did you find your passport? <laughs> no, because he's probably still got it. That was another trip two years ago in Benidorm. Got to Benidorm at about 12 o'clock at night. And we were on the plane, obviously having a couple of beers. And there was no one sh- at 12 o'clock. I don't know, it must have been because there was no one scanning your passport. So I just went through, got into the taxi, got to the... Got to the hotel or the, the, the where we were staying, and I was just like, I don't have a passport. So I was just like, this was the very first night. I was like, don't worry about it. So I rang my friend who's in our hostess. Well, he's a, a trolley doll. Yeah. And he was like, when you get when you get home, I said, listen, I'm going home on, I'm going home on Sunday night. He goes, let's get to the airport on Sunday night at about or Sunday early and just tell him you need to sign a form, a waiver form to get home. So I was like, right, okay, is this definitely going to work? And he goes, trust me, it's going to work. You can get back into the company. So I was like, right, okay. So I got there Sunday with the lads. Looked at the woman and said, listen, I've lost my passport. She's like, when do you lose that? I was like, I don't really know. Even though I thought I'd lost it on the first day. 
And I was like, right, what do you, I said, you have a form you have to sign to, to, to get back on the plane? She's like, no, who told you that? It's like, my friend, he's nervous there. She's like, no, 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 you need a passport. So I'm thinking to myself, I've got a picture on my phone, show them a picture on my phone of a passport. No, you need, you need a proper passport. So here's me. Oh, so obviously three, Benidorm, three days in the Benidorm on the drink. And like, you're, you've hit a brick wall, come, you just want to go home to your bed, you know what I mean? So no passport. So what I'm going to do, so had to go, left the, left the airport, just went into a taxi and said, listen, take me to the nearest hotel. I'll need to get a passport in the morning. So luckily enough, Madrid has an embassy because the next one, no, sorry, Alicante has an embassy. Embassy. So the, the nearest one was Madrid after that, which is four hours away. So I was thinking to myself, what am I going to do here? So I rang, I rang on the Monday morning and I went up to Alicante, got, a, got an emergency passport. In the meantime, I rang, I rang the missus and she was like, what are you doing? It's like, I've lost my passport. She's like, when did you lose your passport? I was like, I don't know. Even though I, I left it, I lost it. <laughs> Of the first day, I wouldn't tell her, like, you know what I mean? But boys said to me, Listen, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go the next day with you and, and we'll go and get it straight away. And then you come back and not be sorted. I was like, No, don't worry, sign this form and you get on the plane. So that didn't happen. So I went up there, she blocked me, she blocked me on WhatsApp and everything. That was why really, really, I like so trying to get hold of her and she's blocking me on WhatsApp. I was like, Oh, no, here we go. But finally, finally, I got it. I, I went, I got it, and then I came home and the, the next day and I booked the flight. And, I think it cost me all, all about five hundred pound extra to get to stay for another day. I just didn't. Boys, I know, just go back, go back to Benidorm. And I was like, no, I'm not going back to Benidorm for a day on my own. So I just thought, yeah. I'd stay no, those end of season trips are always disastrous in some way. Honestly, mate, I've, 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 ever since that one, I'm not going back to it. They're, they're booking this year, and they're saying to me, "And all you come, and I'm like, don't have my passports." <laughs> <laughs> I get picking up as well by Scott Dav- Scott Davidson about the cabin in Benidorm. So oh, that's the cabin. That was the cabin where we all stayed. So we were like. All the boys were staying like locally in the close to the centre, and like four or five of us were like, "Look at this here!" We were so on the WhatsApp groups and showing pictures and all that. Why don't we stay here in this wee cabin thing? So we're like, "Right, okay." So about six of us booked into this cabin. We walked in. There was only about two or three beds. I mean, the shot you had this. There was hot water for an hour. I mean, there was three boys and two two boys in the shower together and all. Like people people sleeping on tables and stuff and. People sleeping out in the balconies and stuff like that. So no, no, never, never, never again. <laughs> so I was like, next time I go, if I ever do go, if I ever find my passport, then I'll be, I'll be sleeping in a hotel and won't be. <laughs> good, good, good times, mate. Good times. Brilliant. Um, I, I've got a one more uh, question about um your career. Uh, Andrew Dixon asked, how long did it take you to shift your English accent? <laughs> <laughs> As long as it took him to, sh- as long as it took him to shake his fake tan, he used to wear. Do you know? Sorry. Do you know him? No. No, no. I just seen it in the Twitter. Uh, the question. I uh, no. He, if you have a look at his Twitter feed, he's. No, I mean, he's. I used to call him David Dickinson. He's like mahogany, but he's he's sort of he's sort of calm down. I, he's the same age as me. I played I played with him at St Andrews and stuff, and uh, I played with him in Northern Ireland. He was at Wolves when I was at Conley. What a what a player he was, like brilliant player. Yeah. But so. Uh, I didn't really have an English accent. He was the one who was strutting around Belfast when he came home with his, with his, with his white jeans on and his fake tan and his earrings and his, and his hair gel back and curtains. And but, that's where you could say he played across the water to people? Of course he did. He's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, Dixie, you left, you left Northern Ireland and you were, you were like, I mean, you were a wee quiet boy. Now you've come back here and you, you think you're David Beckham or <laughs> Sandra Pay on for 24 one more question for you, mate. Uh, Barry Begley asked about um, how, did you find, <laughs> how did you find a session? This is actually a serious question, in fairness. Right. He says, how did you find a session plan uh, coursework for you to be? I don't, think he, I, don't, I don't think he means it that way. He, he, Does he not, though? <laughs> no. he's, wanting, he's wanting to know how, find, how, I find, how I actually find it to put it on, this, on, on the portal. <laughs> <laughs> he, helped, he helped me. He helped me a lot with it. So he did. You know what I mean? I, was, I spoke to him a few times regarding it. So... He sent, me, he sent me a few links and stuff like that to help me through it. Good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, that's, that's everything. Thanks very much for being right. uh, well, and giving up your time. No um, problem, appreciate it. Anytime. I wish you best of luck next year. You've obviously... Cheers, you too. Um, oh, there's one more question, actually, because it seems to be a hot topic at the moment. Um, you were mentioned for the Cumber Rack job. And somebody's asked for the saying of her cumber going back to their old club. <laughs> is there no. any truth to these rumors or will the put not, not one not one bit. 
not one bit. I've had boys on the phone to me flat out asking me, you know what I mean? I saw it on Twitter there a few a week ago to say who's favourite for it, but no, I'm honestly in hand and heart, I, I have no interest in it. I've I'm I'm only interested in Dunmary Reg at this minute in time and see obviously where it takes us this year. Good stuff, good stuff. Um well once again, thanks very much for giving out your time, mate. And right that's this episode for this week. Um, this podcast is sponsored by Learners Ross Driving School and Drumbo Park Racecourse. We'll be back next week with another interview. Thank you. Cheers, thank you.